Hi, this is Ed Lieberman, and this demo on adding a host is from my Microsoft Server Virtualization Training Course. And all this talking about hosts, why don't we go ahead and add one? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and once highlighted on New York, which we're already highlighted, I'm going to come over here and click on Add Host. Now, the first thing we have here in this wizard is it says select the host location and then enter the required credentials. Is this a Windows server-based host on an Active Directory domain? Or is it a Windows server-based host out on a perimeter network? Or is it a VMware ESX server host? Okay, so this these don't have to all be just Microsoft hosts. It can also support some VMware hosts. Now, our particular host is a Windows Server-based host, right? It's Hyper-V, and it is part of the Active Directory domain. So we're going to go ahead and leave that checked, and we're going to go ahead and enter credentials, so administrator, and put in our password. And then we decide whether we have to tell it whether it's in a trusted domain or not. Okay, so if it's on a Windows Server-based host in an Active Directory domain, but it's not a trusted domain to where we are right now, then we need to tell it that but it is part of a trusted domain. It's part of this same domain that we're in right now. So all is well, it's in a trusted domain. I can go ahead and click on next. Now we need to select the actual host server. Now, if you know the full name of the computer, you could go ahead and type it here. I particularly like to search though. I think it's easier. That way you also know that there's no typos or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just put in New York Hyper. Let's just leave it as simple as that. We could limit this right down to only Hyper-V servers if we want or only virtual server. Okay, because those are two different products, right? We might have virtual server 2005. All right, so let's go ahead and click search. And you'll see here that it found New York Hyper-V1 .globalmantics.local. It's running Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise and it's running Microsoft Hyper-V. So I can highlight that guy because that is the one that I'm looking for and click add. So it's now been added. Click OK. You'll see it's been added down here, right? Selected servers. If that was the wrong server, I could remove it, but I don't want to do that because this is the right <laughs> server. All right, so let's go ahead and click next. It says one or more of the selected servers is running the Windows Server 2008 operating system or a later version, which that's true. It's running Server 2008 R2. If the Hyper-V role is not enabled on any of these servers, Virtual Machine Manager will enable the role on those servers as a part of the add host process. So check that out. What a great way to go ahead and get Hyper-V set up on a server as opposed to the manual way that we already did it. Okay, so we don't need to worry about it. We could have done it right here from Virtual Machine Manager. It does tell you though, that as part of this process, it will result in a restart of the servers. So make sure that if uh, you have anything going on on those servers, uh, that you understand that it's gonna reboot. Along those same lines, if any of these servers have a pending restart, okay? So if let's say there were some updates done to the server, and in order for those updates to complete, it needed a reboot. Okay, so if there was a pending restart on that computer, it would take care of that now as part of this process. So again, it's just saying, hey, look, you might get a reboot. So make sure that that server is in a place that it can be rebooted. So do I want to continue? Yes, I do. Add the selected new host to follow the host group. So we don't want to go to all hosts. We want to put this in the New York host group. Okay, so we change that there. Here's host reassociation. If any of the selected hosts are currently managed by another virtual machine manager. Okay, so if there's another VMM server that was currently hosting this particular Hyper-V server, then I would want to go ahead and select to reassociate it with this VMM server. Now, I don't need to worry about that because it's not currently tied to any VMM server. So I can just go ahead and click next. Here is where I can add a virtual machine path or use default path. So uh, again, if you remember back when we first configured Hyper-V, we had the ability to go ahead and set up a path. Matter of fact, 
Let's go take a quick look at that right now. Okay, here on our Hyper-V server, right? Here's New York Hyper-V1. If I go into the Hyper-V manager, right? This is the other way of managing a Hyper-V server. And I go into my Hyper-V settings. Here is where we had our default path for the virtual machines. That's what it's talking about. Let me go ahead and close out of all of this. And let's jump back over to our virtual machine manager server. Okay, it's right here that we could go ahead and set that path up. If we don't do anything, it will just go ahead and take the default locations. Okay, so if we don't do anything here, and I'm not going to worry about it, it's just going to take the default that that particular machine already has set up. All right, so if we had a specific place we wanted to do this, we could set it up here. But since we don't, since we've already decided we're just going to use the, the default location that, that it picks, right, because we just have the single hard drive anyway, I can leave this alone. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And here's a summary. Again, I could view the script. Okay, so if I wanted to see how this would be done in PowerShell, here's the script. So I could maybe go ahead and save this script if I wanted to. And then all I would have to do, I mean, if we look at everything here, let me blow this up so we can see as much as possible. You know, in the future, if we wanted to add any more hosts and we wanted them to go into the same host group, all we would have to do is change this right here to the name of the other server. Okay, everything else, defaults are just fine. Be a great way to go ahead and run a script to go ahead and add other hosts quickly and easily. Let's go ahead and close that, and let's select to add the host. And you will see here that uh, we basically get a, a jobs window that opens up. And if I expand this over, what are some of the things we did? Well, we created a virtual machine host group, right? We already did that. That's completed. We changed the properties of, what do we do? The, the virtual machine host group. Um, I don't think we actually changed any of those properties. Uh, but because I didn't hit cancel, I think I hit OK when I left that window. It, it thought that I made a change, so it says that I've completed that. And now we're just going ahead and adding a virtual machine host. And you'll see that it's sitting at 0%. I also want to tell you, don't panic. It will stay at 0% for a little while. Okay, it does take a while while it goes through and does its processes. And you'll notice that this number will start climbing in time but it might take a few minutes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording of this lesson uh, as, actually as I'm saying that you'll notice that we just hit 50 percent 66 percent so I may not even have to pause <laughs> uh, but I am I'm gonna go ahead and pause while this finishes up and that also gives you an opportunity to pause in case your system is taking a little bit longer all right another minute or two has passed and you can see here that it now shows that the adding of this virtual machine host is completed. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And sure enough, I can now see that I have a host inside of the New York host group. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.